Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I apologize for the delay in videos. I was actually away on business in Chicago all last week, so I didn't really have time to make any new videos. But I also wanted to give a shout out to everyone that subscribed and told their friends about this channel. We are almost at 200 subscribers, so keep spreading the word and uh, appreciate the support. Now let's dive into the video. In the last video, we left off by implementing the ability to transfer Funk tokens to other Ethereum wallets using this component right here. But what we didn't implement was the ability to refresh um, this token balance automatically once the tokens were sent. And to demonstrate that, just for a refresher, let's go ahead and send some Funk tokens to account two. We'll send like 500 of them. Send. And the tokens have been sent, but this balance does not update. So in order to see the new balance, we need to actually refresh the browser. And that can get kind of annoying. So instead of doing that, let's make it so that our application updates that balance automatically as soon as a new uh, transfer is made. And we can do that by listening to the transfer event that's part of every ERC20 token contract. And we do that using the Web3 library, and the Web3 library makes that super easy. So if you notice, I kind of made a few small changes to the original wallet info component. Uh, I, got, I took the code that was in the mounted hook up here and then pulled uh, getting the ether balance and the token balance into their own methods to kind of clean things up. Um, and we're actually going to reuse this get token balance method. So this makes it super easy. So just like calling a method on your contract, like contract.balance of, you can actually listen to events by just calling the event from the contract object, like so. So we're going to call contract, and then the name of the event is transfer. Uh, and then we're going to pass in a callback function like normal. So it takes an error and then gets a response. And then within this callback function, we can actually do something with the response or we can do something else. In this case, we don't care about the response. We just care that a transaction was made. So we're just going to call this dot get token balance and this will just pull the balance the token balance from the blockchain and then repopulate the number in our component so to demonstrate that let's go back to our application let's send some ether to that address again so when we send this, keep an eye on this balance. It should update automatically. And voila, it refreshed and changed. So you might have noticed this transactions component down here. This wasn't here in the last video. I created this so we can kind of create a useful uh, ledger to kind of keep track of all of our transactions on the blockchain. So what we want to do is pull every transaction that this wallet has made since the beginning of the trans or beginning of the contract as well as populate any new transactions dynamically as they're made. So to do that, let's go into our transactions component. Um, here's all the markup. Like don't worry about it. It's just some nifty uh, data table stuff um, to make everything look pretty. Um, what we care about is this items array. So the items array um, will populate the um, table um, with however many objects are in that array. So every object is going to have a two parameter, or not two property, a from property, and an amount property. So 
what we're going to do is listen for all those events and then push those events into this array as we receive them. So we're going to do this very similarly to how we worked in the wallet info component. So call contract dot transfer. But we're also going to pass in a filter. Um, so the first argument uh, is a bunch of options uh, that we're not going to use. But the second argument can be a filter object. And the filter object has a few um, useful options. Uh, if we go to this portion of the documentation, what we care about is the Let's uh, make this bigger. What we care about is the from block and the to block. Uh, so we want to listen to the very beginning and then listen to anything that hasn't happened yet. So we want to pass in this pending uh, option. So let's see how that's done. So let's pass in the from block. And we're just going to say zero. So we're going to listen. We're going to listen to the beginning of time or the beginning of the actual blockchain. In production, you probably don't want to do this. You probably want to uh, get the actual block that your contract token contract was created on. But in this case, just to make it easy, we're going to just use zero. And then the two block, we can pass an actual block number, or we can pass in this pending option and that will listen for every um, event even if it hasn't been created yet so it just keeps on listening uh, and then just like normal we're gonna pass in a callback function get the response um, and then we're just gonna log this response just so we can see what a response actually looks like when we receive it. So let's go ahead and save this. Go back to our code and open up a terminal. So as you can see, we've made a few transactions and we pulled those transactions um, from the blockchain since they're from the beginning and this is what they actually look like when we receive them. So it's just an object and what we care about is this args object within it. And this corresponds to the parameters that are passed to the transfer event on our ERC20 token contract. So we've got a from parameter, a to parameter, and then a value which is basically just a number object um, which we're going to convert using the uh, from way utility function in the web 3 js library so let's go back and actually use those so we can close this out and go back to our code um, and so what we want to do is first we're listening to every single transfer event that's associated with this contract we only care about transfer events that are associated with the wallet we are working with. And we can get the wallet address that we're working with um, from contract, the eth object that's associated with it, and then this Coinbase. So that's just the address of the wallet we're working with. So to filter for that, we'll use a an if statement. So if response.args.2 is equal to contract f dot coinbase or if the response dot args dot from is equal to that same address. So that will filter out so we don't see other people's transactions. We don't care about those. So if that's true, we want to push a brand new item into this array. So in order to do that, call the items array and then the push method on that. And we want to pass in a new object. 
and each object is going to take a two property. So that would be equal to response.args.2, a from, which is response.args.from, and then an amount. And we need to convert that, so we're going to use web3 from way response.args.value and then convert that to a number. So that should work, that should do it. Let's save that, go back to our code, and voila, you can see we've pulled those two um, existing transactions. So we've sent to that address right there, and it's from our address over here, and those are the values that we sent. So if we do another one, we do the same thing. Three, seven, four, five, yeah, let's do something random. We'll hit send, submit, and you see the balance has changed, and you see the, uh, a new transaction has been added to the list. So if we go back, if we go to, I think it was this address. Yeah, if we go back to this address and refresh, so we're in a new wallet, you can see all the same transactions. It's actually to our address and then from the original address and then this is our token balance. And we can actually send some tokens to another address. So let's just pick, uh, we'll do account 12. We'll send some tokens their way. That's not going to work because we don't have any ether, so we can't um, send any gas. Let's go back to account one because they do have ether. We'll send some tokens to account 12. All right, that was added there. So we should see this balance in account 12. Yeah, reject that. Uh, let's go down there. And there we go. So we have the one transaction and we have the token balance. So that pretty much covers uh, listening for events. If you liked this video, please hit like and subscribe and be sure to tell all your friends about it. Uh, you can also follow me on Steemit. The link will be down below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.